I still haven't told my father that I called the Villanova man family yet. <laughs> um, but welcome, Kerry. Um, I'm going to have a little different rhythm to my speech, so bear with me. Um, and I'm going to need your help, your participation a little, little ways through it. You know, first I want to thank Molly um, for, this, for, for, for me being here. You know, when I left Princeton and got the job at Georgetown, in my press conference there I said, you know, I'm one of the few people that can leave home yet still come home. Um, and, and I want to thank Molly and, for bringing me back home. Uh, to one of my homes. Um, we, we, we have to thank our president uh, for his support of athletics and, his, and your administration's support of athletics, you know, particularly in a time and an era when it could be easy not to. And you, know, you have a lot of great individuals here, a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players that would not have had that opportunity without your support, you know, so I just want to say thank you for that. Um, you know, I can, I love this place. I really do. You know, I, my youngest son is now in the seventh grade, and Monica was pregnant with Matthew when I got the job at Georgetown. All right, and little Maddie to this day still says, I miss Princeton. He never lived here. <laughs> never been here. Um, you know, but this place is special. Uh, and, and with each passing year, you know, I, I understand more and grasp more how special it is and what a privilege um, it is to be a part of this family. Uh, and, and I want to make sure that all of you guys, you know, understand that too. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have been a student athlete here, like, like everyone sitting here, and then an assistant coach here, and then a head coach here. And I can't tell you, I can't adequately express how that has affected my life. And I'm just extremely grateful. You know, I have to thank Coach Carrill, uh, who gave me the opportunity. <laughs> you know, and so you guys don't understand, maybe yet, how important your coach is, how much they will affect the rest of your life. You know, you will never have a boss that's as tough as your coach, that's as demanding as your coach, that wants more from you than your coach, that expects the best from you as your coach. You know, there aren't too many decisions that I've made in my life since I've left here where I don't hear Coach Carrillo's voice in my, in my, in my, in my head. Um, you know, when, when, when we lose, and we had a difficult year this year, but when we lose, I feel embarrassed for him. Um, because he's just shaped so much of how I think and how I process things. You know, but to take a step back, so you go through the recruiting process. And most of the time in the recruiting process, you're used to being told how great you are and how much the team wants you. And, and how much you're, how you're good. You know, you, you leave, if you go on a recruiting visit, you leave, you feel good about yourself. You know, and I remember very vividly, and I decided that I wanted to come here, sitting in Jadwin, sitting up in the bleachers. Billy Ryan, who was a senior at the time, I was a senior in high school, Billy was a senior here, uh, was down on the court working out and just, just putting himself through a tough workout. And Coach and I are sitting up in the stands, and he's telling me how much I stink. <laughs> you know? and you aren't good at this, and you can't do that, and you better improve at that, and if you don't, you're gonna play JV. You know, well, hell, I thought I was gonna be first team All-American as a freshman. You know, now he's telling me I'm gonna play JV. Um, but it was after that conversation, you know, that I realized that I wanted to come here, because I knew he would be honest with me, I knew he would push me, um, and I didn't know that then, but, you know, 20, 30, 40, however many years later, his voice is still in my head. His voice is still in my head. And a lot of you will feel the same thing and that, and that same understanding with your coach. I want to thank Gary, Gary Walters for giving me the job as a head coach. All right? And so timing is everything in life. So I'm, I'm the second assistant here. Uh, I was the third assistant when Coach Carrillo was the coach, the volunteer, all right? 
became the second assistant, was working for Coach Carmody, Bill Carmody. Bill Carmody gets the job at Northwestern. Now, fortunately for me, all right, in the spring prior to that, the other assistant, Joe Scott, got the job at Air Force, so he leaves. All right, September rolls around, school has started, and Bill Carmody leaves to go to Northwestern. It's the only reason I got the job here. It's the only reason. You know, if it happened under normal conditions in the spring, um, I don't know whether Gary would have given me that job. Um, but I want to thank him uh, for that opportunity. Uh, you guys, class of 16, congratulations. You know, congratulations. <laughs> you know, I remember sitting there where you are now, you know, probably the same emotions, like excited, happy. I don't know about you guys, I was scared. You know, didn't know what was coming next. So graduation is this weekend. And I had a job working for Ford Motor Company in, in Virginia, in Annandale, Virginia. Uh, one of my best friends uh, was, was working for General Electric, uh, also in Virginia. And so we go back home, I'm from DC. And it's right outside of DC is where we both are working. And we're looking for a place. We're looking for an apartment to stay in. I'm staying at home, he's staying with a buddy. He's getting a stipend for, for housing, but he's staying with a buddy, so he's pocketing that. I'm staying at home, all right? A month after graduation, you know, my dad comes home and he says, so John, how is that apartment hunting thing going on <laughs> with you and Jimmy? You know, like, oh, Pops, you know, it's coming okay. We can't really find a place. It's right between where he's working and where I'm working, but, you know, we're going to find something soon. This is a month after graduation. This is July. He says, well, son, you got a week. <laughs> then you got to get out of my house. <laughs> and so Jimmy and I found a place about two days later. <laughs> and my dad kicks me out of the house. Like, come on, man, give me some slack. Give me till September. Um, you know, but anyway, um, you guys have a huge burden slash responsibility slash opportunity slash privilege. You are the leaders of tomorrow. You are the leaders of our world. You are the leaders of this institution. Go ahead. And it's crucial that you understand that you have the responsibility not only to achieve, serve, lead, which you have to do, but you have to give back and you have to try to pull somebody along with you. And it's really important. Most of you, maybe not everyone, you know, you're sitting here now and, and, and when you're going through the process, it might have been hell but you had a pretty good time here. And with each passing year, you're gonna realize how great it was. And there are a lot of people that came before you that helped make your experience what it was. And it's your responsibility to not only support your teams, to support your programs, to support this institution, all right? With your time, all right? With your heart, with your caring, with your money, all right? It's important. All right, a lot of you, Mr. Denunzio sitting right here, Denunzio Pool. Right. Jay Sherrard isn't here, but is one of the main people responsible for the, the 52 Stadium. All right, Weaver Track. And, and, and those guys were able to give significant chunks of money, but every little bit helps. And it's not just about the money. It's about staying connected. It's about being involved. This institution does a great job of making sure you stay connected. And it's important that you guys understand as you go forward, you are leaders of the future. You the leaders of tomorrow. It's, it's important that you realize your dreams. Achievement, leadership, service. That's important that you, that's not just for your time at Princeton. That's after you leave here. That's essential that you understand that, that you embrace that. Okay, so I want to, I need, I need your help with an exercise real quick, okay? Stay with me, I'm not crazy. Everyone please stand up, if you can. 
Coach Carrillo, you don't have to. <laughs> okay? Now, to be a good athlete, you have to have an imagination. All right? And so now I want everyone to imagine and envision that we now, under this tent, represent the world's population, roughly 7.4 billion people. That's what this group represents. Okay, we got that, look around. This is the world's, the global population. All right, everyone please sit down. Some of you guys are gonna get a little exercise right now. If you're seating, sitting in tables one through 68, please stand up again. Okay? You represent approximately, and these numbers may have changed slightly, 80% um, of the world's population. Roughly 5.9 billion people who've never traveled more than 100 miles from their home. Please sit down. I got some more for you. Okay. If you're sitting in tables 33 to 75, please stand up. Okay? You represent approximately 50% of the world's population, approximately 3.7 billion people that live on less than $2 a day. One billion of which live on less than $1 a day. Please sit down. Tables one to 32, please stand up. You represent 37% of the world's population, about 2.5 billion people that don't have access to adequate sanitation, that don't have access to clean water. Please sit down. Tables 40 to 54, please stand up. You represent 15% of the world's population, roughly 1.1 billion people, two-thirds of who are women, who are unable to read or write. Please sit down. Tables 21 to 30, please stand up. You represent 11% of the world's population, roughly 860 million people who suffer from chronic hunger. Please sit down. This young lady in the red top, please stand up. Yep, you. <laughs> you represent one one hundredth of one percent of the world's population that has the privilege of attending an American research institution such as ours. All right, please sit down. So with that, you have a responsibility. All right, you have an obligation for achievement. The world needs you to realize your dreams and we're here to support you, all right? The world needs you to serve and help the various groups that just stood up, whether it be globally, and it's different. The time I graduated in 88, it's a much different world now. It's, everything's global. You know, it's not just, hey, I wanna go to Silicon Valley, hey, I wanna go to Wall Street. I mean, you guys can go anywhere in the world. The world is smaller now, all right? It's your responsibility, your obligation to use what you've gained here, all right, at the best institution in the world, 
all right, with the best teachers in the world, with the best coaches in the world, with the best preparation in the world, all right, it's your obligation to give back, to serve, to lead. You can do it. I'm excited. Congratulations. Thank you for having me.